This semester, I was assigned a data group. During this time, we have learned the importance of animal welfare, and here is the information we explored as a group. Introduction Background of the Industry Immigrants started bringing cattle over for milk production in the late 1600s. Now, if you think about it, that's a very long time, and it's continuously being practiced today. Today, if we walked on the dairy, the main breeds we would see are Holsteins and our Jerseys. Holsteins is the image above. We see our classic black and white spotted cow, which are known for their yield rather than their quality. Unlike Jerseys, who are known for their butter fat contents. They're tan or light brown. Um, these cows are milked up to two to three times a day based on the operation and management of the dairy. Dairy cows are milked around 300 days a year and are given periods of time where they are dry so that they can rest their mammary glands and heal. California, the nation's dairy leader. Dairy is a very significant product in our lives and is often associated with families because it supports skeletal, skeletal growth. We need many cows to keep, keep up with all the people in the world and our diets according to this image, about 1.72 million milk cows. And well, cheese is delicious, so I'm not surprised that our percentage is about 19%. United States impact. Reports show that the dairy industry accounts for 1% of the U.S. gross domestic product, generating an economic impact of 620 billion the industry also creates nearly 3 million U.S. jobs that generate around $159 billion in wages. The dairy industry is very successful, as it states in the image. It is important in many places, including California, especially in the Central Valley. I mean, every corner we look, we see a dairy plant. Company organizations creating tools. Global Animal Partnership is one of the largest animal welfare food labeling programs in North America. They believe meaningful labels claim validated by third-party farm auditors are the key influencing the industry raising consumer expectations and creating long-lasting change. Their motto is from farm to fork, the label you can trust. They ensure your trust by implementing a five-step program that sets standards for farms and organizations in their system. PACO, Professional Animal Auditor Certification Organization, has trained auditors to serve the swine, dairy, poultry, beef cattle, and feedlot industries in the process. PACO provides much needed expertise consisting in required training. They have become the authority on animal welfare auditing, providing high quality training and certification credentials for auditors and audits. Four steps in their certification process include training, certification, recertification, and continuing education. Other companies in PECO include Cargill, JBS, Merck, and McDonald's. American Humane Certified was the first farm animal welfare audit program. American Humane has contributed to nearly every significant improvement in the welfare of animals through its efforts to better the care of working animals and livestock in transportation. During the audit, if the auditor sees deliberate mistreatment or neglect of the animals, they must stop the audit and contact the manager, their auditing firm, and the American Humane Certified Program right away. Here is a typical audit scoring for the American Humane Certified. Favorable production systems. The most favorable production system that utilizes each tool is organic production systems. Organic farming requires more managing to the soil and pasture quality. In order to be certified or as organic, producers must ensure no presence of toxic pesticides, prohibit certain fertilizers and herbicides, and promotes a production system that encourages biodiversity and a flourishing ecosystem. Cattle are fed organic non GMO feed. Majority of the year graze on organic pastures and they are not allowed to be given antibiotics or growth hormones. This is to ensure the best care and quality of meat for 
cattle and farmers. Popular production systems. There are a few common practices. The first one being free stall barns. Um, this is where cattle have the ability to move from one stall to another. They are also provided with bedding for added comfort and support. Free stalls keep cattle covered from harsh weather such as freezing temperatures or super hot summers as well as things like wind, rain, snow. The second common practice being dry lot operations. Cattle are given large dry pastures. They also have the ability to eat and drink as they please um, along with access to shade. This is more popular in drier climates. Who are the target consumers of milk and milk products? The largest consumer of dairy products is families, especially families that have children in them. Now, why is this? Children are growing and milk has many nutritional values like vitamin D, vitamin A, calcium, and protein, which support skeletal growth and brain development. There have been studies that show an increase of up to 20% in weight and height of children um, who drink milk versus those who do not drink milk. So for example, let's say there's child A and child B. They both have the same body type, similar diet, similar age. If child A is the one who drinks milk, they will be around 60 pounds whereas child B who doesn't drink milk, again, they have the same activity level, they eat about the same things. Child B will only be 48 pounds, so that's almost a 15 pound difference, and that's crazy that just drinking milk can give you that much of a difference. Products and pricing. Her dog is a company that sells Bluetooth ear tags that can connect to the producer's phone and allows constant data to verify animals' health and allows you to have records on things like eating and drinking habits, gender, when they're ruminating, birth and age. Prices vary depending on the type of tag that they choose, but it's typically between $10 and $15. This device is extremely beneficial because it can give you information as soon as it starts happening so if they're getting sick or if they're ready to breed you have that information right away and can get on top of it dairy scoring protocol total points possible total na's adjusted points achievable total points achieved achieved and overall audit percentages are the categories that it will be scored with and this is from the American Humane Certified uh, Scoring System. And with this system, it must be passed with an 85% or better. Dairy Scoring Protocol Global Animal Partnership. They have a five-step plan. Step number one is no crowding. Um, it is also proved that cows that are not overly crowded will produce more milk than how much you would produce with those extra cows in the herd. Step number two is enriched environment. This is an environment that is meant to help the cows thrive and be very productive. Step number three is pasture centered. They have access to pasture as well as access to a ration. Step number four is animal centered. There's no physical alterations. And step number five is also animal-centered. Their entire life is on the farm, or they stay on the farm for their entire life. So that means they're born on the farm, they're raised on the farm as heifers, they're bred on the farm, they calve on the farm, and all of their lactations stay on the same farm that they were birthed on. ...of the American Humane Certified in the Global Animal Partner section, this audit tool covers the herd health plans including vaccinations and withdrawal periods. Uh, they also cover euthanasia, their standards, and as well as methods. And both tools also expect management to have general records such as the birth date, lactation, calving cycles, housing, body condition scores, and transportation. 
The audit tools also expect management to have records of employee training, expecting that all employees hired by the operation must know how to handle animals and how to treat the animals on the property. The audit tools of both the American Human Certified and the Global Animal Partner expects that all these records are kept updated and accurate. The Global Animal Partner actually has a section on rodents and animal control, which contains pest control and also predator control for the animals on the property. The American Humane Certified covers slaughter guideline, which the Global Animal Partner does not. The slaughter guidelines for the American Humanes consists of any on-site slaughter has to have records available to show that humane slaughter and processing practices were followed on site. If the slaughter has to be done off site or by an outside company, a certificate of conformance from the company that did the slaughter must be available to confirm that the NAMI humane slaughter and processing practices were followed. For Global Animal Partnership, they cover physical alteration, which the American Humane Certified does not cover. This is explained in Step 5 of the 5-step program, and it includes castration, dehorning, disbudding, and branding. They will explain how to manage pain as well as methods of how to do it in the least painful way if possible. It has to meet their standard or the operation will not pass the audits. Failure of the audit standards of the American Humane Certified consist of any willful acts of animal abuse and non-conformance to any of the Global Animal Partnership set of multi-tiered standards. This, of course, being to ensure that the five freedoms of animal welfare that can be seen here are met, such as freedom from hunger and thirst, freedom from discomfort, freedom from pain, injury, and disease, freedom to express normal behavior, and, of course, freedom from fear and distress. Audit instructions. For the American Humane Certified, they list the standards and expectations on a point system basis. One point is, is what is done right. Must pass, and if, if there is a fail in any non-conformation conformance, and it has audit for transportation, slaughter, and, and more. For a global animal partnership, they have a scoring rubric, and it's on a step level. They have expectations listed in the table, as you can see on the right, and they have topics that need to be audited, such as animal health and record keeping. American Humane Certified Scoring is a very specific point-based system that consists of core criteria one through seven. Core criteria one applies to the plant only and is scored once during the audit. It consists of assessing the plant's preparedness for receiving animals, such as having emergency plans in place, as well as providing temperature management tools for the animals and having acceptable handling tools, etc. Core Criteria 1 also assesses the transportation policy, making sure they have a written animal welfare policy for the transporters, whereas Core Criteria 2 through 7 apply to the individual trailers themselves only, each trailer having its own score sheet for all loads transported during the audit, and at the end of it, these scores are then added up to obtain the final scoring. Global Animal Partnership Scoring. This includes expectations in the boxes and has steps on each side of the scoring has specific for how to pass the audit, it has specific rules for failures, and it includes examples. This is for castration, dehorning, um, the overall health of the animal as well. During their audits, American Humane Certified makes sure that there is no animal abuse. Animal health is taken into consideration to provide the least amount of stress. Records are kept organized and updated. Transportation of animals is done in a low stress, safe and timely manner, and that the process of slaughter for the animal is kept painless and conditions kept safe for not just the animal, but employees as well. Global Animal Partnership also makes sure that animal health is considered and that they're kept healthy as well as treated humanely. They make sure records are kept updated, organized and truthful, and that tools used are well maintained and clean, as well as making sure housing for the animal is safe and comfortable, whether it be in a barn or a pasture. Some improvements. The, humane, the American Humane Certified has a chart for all their scoring rubric and would help farmers know what they need to upkeep. 
Uh, the Global Animal Partnership has a point-based system. And here on the right, you can see uh, all the things that some of these audits have. So we have uh, wire cage prohibited, space required per hen, excess outdoor space required, exposure to daylight required, um, de-beaking, de and all the different welfare checks that you can keep and how they, if they require it or not in their audit. From all of this information, we can see that each audit tool has is its advantages as well as disadvantages. And the type of audit that's being chosen to use can depend on your operation or on said operations target consumer for their product. 